Texas Senator Ted Cruz refused to wear a mask when talking to reporters, and Joe Biden held his first press conference as president. For more on this, it's time for a closer look. The modern conservative movement seems concerned, above all else, with preserving their solemn right to be dicks to everyone else around them. They like to say facts don't care about your feelings until you hurt their feelings by politely asking them to wear a mask or stop using racist slurs, and they melt down like they're being hobbled by Kathy Bates. Case in point, yesterday a reporter politely asked Ted Cruz to wear a mask during a press conference inside the Capitol. Now remember that Cruz had the option to get vaccinated early because he's technically a senator, even though he looks like the guy who has to work the stock room at AutoZone because he's too creepy for the register. Need my help out there, boss? No, we're good. <laughs> but most people had to wait. And while there's some early preliminary proof that the vaccines help stop the spread of COVID, we just still don't know for sure, especially with the rise of several more contagious variants. So if you're a decent, normal person and someone politely asks you to wear a mask in their company, you do it. Ted Cruz, however, took it as yet another opportunity to be a giant ass. Would you mind a mask on for us? Uh, yeah, when I'm talking to the TV camera, I'm not going to wear a mask, and all of us have been immunized, so. It make us feel better. Uh, you're welcome to step away if you like. When I'm talking to the TV camera, what a weird little window into what he thinks being on TV is. If I talk to the camera, it will tell the TVs at home what I said. I tell secrets to the phone, and the phone is a gossip, and the person on the other end finds out. I'm going to start using that myself. Hello, I'm Seth Meyers. Welcome to Late Night Camera Conversation. Guess what happened to me today, Lens? Man, Ted Cruz is the Steph Curry of being a giant dick. He never misses a shot. He's the kind of guy who would come over to your house for a dinner party, and when you politely ask him to take his feet off the table, would say, you're welcome to leave if you like. Again, remember, in that situation, Ted Cruz was the one who was vaccinated. He's the one who was unlikely to get sick. But apparently, he couldn't care less if anyone else in the room got sick. I mean, God, no wonder his neighbors ratted him out when he went to Cancun. Do you know how unlikable you have to be for your neighbors? to go to the press, if you invite someone to go on vacation and their reaction is, I'm telling the New York Times, you might be a bad guy. <laughs> on Lord Order, even when they're investigating a murder and try to talk to neighbors, everyone opens their door half an inch and says, I don't know nothing. Meanwhile, Ted Cruz's neighbors all have lawn signs that say, ask me about Ted's trip to Mexico. And as a reminder, just because you personally get vaccinated doesn't mean the pandemic is magically over. The virus is still circulating. There's still variants out there. And until case numbers are much lower and vaccination rates are much higher, other people around you are still at risk. And by the way, Cruz was also wrong about the official CDC guidance, as CNN's doctor, Sanjay Gupta, explained. The CDC guidance, I just pulled it up again because the guidance does change, uh, admittedly. Um, but it says even if you've been fully vaccinated, you need to keep taking precautions in public places, wearing a mask, staying six feet apart, avoiding crowds. For him, he's pretty well protected, admittedly, against getting severely ill, requiring hospitalization. He may not be as well protected against moderate illness, mild illness, and the, and the possibility that he could still transmit the virus to somebody else. So when he's not wearing a mask, he's potentially putting other people in that room at risk. And that's not even taking into account that anytime you enter a room with Ted Cruz, you're already at risk of being in a room with Ted Cruz. Cruz, of course, doesn't care. If Cruz thought he could score points with the base by filling a squirt gun with salmonella and spraying it at reporters, he'd do it. Although I guess we shouldn't be surprised Cruz doesn't listen to doctors. Can you imagine being his doctor? That's got to be a rough gig. I'll cough, but I'm not turning my head. Republicans have made their opposition to mask culture war issue from day one, and their antagonism has only intensified during the Biden presidency. Last week, for example, Kentucky Senator Rand Paul went after Dr. Anthony Fauci at a hearing for telling people to wear masks even after they get vaccinated, which riled up Fauci. What studies do you have that people that have had the vaccine yeah. or have had the infection are spreading the infection? If we're not spreading the infection, isn't it just theater? No, you it's had not. the vaccine and you're wearing two masks. Isn't that theater? No, that's not. Here we go again with the theater. No, you know, you've gone too far when you get the Brooklyn version of Fauci. Rand Paul's such a dick. Fauci's going to show up to the next hearing in a leather jacket, jet black hair, and a switchblade. Where you going, Tony? There's a fella from Kentucky who's about to be unlucky. What are you saying, T? He's about to get a Fauci OG. <laughs> Seriously, guys, we're just asking you politely, please, just wear a mask. Why can't you just be courteous to the people around you instead of melting down like children? They're the people who show up to Long John Silver without shoes and when they get turned away, say, oh, I guess we're living in Nazi Germany now. I guess the secret police. Just gonna come take me away for the crime and not want my feet to sweat while I eat my breaded shrimp. 
This is the kind of culture war BS the right has been obsessed with for the first two months of Biden's presidency, and that's because his response to the coronavirus pandemic has been overwhelmingly popular so far, as has his $1.9 trillion COVID relief bill. So Republicans have had trouble coming up with an attack on him. For example, they've been obsessing over the fact that until today, Biden hadn't held a formal press conference. And look, I'm all for press conferences, but it all depends on who's giving them. Press conferences under the last guy didn't exactly contain a lot of newsworthy information. You can get the same value from watching open testimony at a New York City Council hearing on public access television. Yeah, good evening, council members. Uh, my name's Mickey, I'm from Kew Gardens, and uh, my proposal is to replace the Statue of Liberty with the statue of Roscoe of uh, the Bedbug Dog. <laughs> also, can I just say, hearing there's a presidential press conference is about as exciting as a monopoly when you win second place in the beauty contest. It's like, okay, I guess it's money, but how the old man win? Who else was in that beauty contest, a foot? And because Fox couldn't find anything else to jump on, they decided to spend weeks obsessing over the whole press conference thing. President Biden has now been in office 43 days and has not held a single solo press conference. No show Joe Biden has been in office 43 days, still has not held a single press conference since becoming president. Biden has yet to hold a solo press conference since he took office now 46 days ago. He has not had a press conference in 48 days. 48 days and counting. We are halfway into the first 100 days and President Biden still has not held a solo news conference. Why hasn't he had a solo press conference? That's the big question. Is it like the campaign where he was hiding in the basement? That was his strategy all the way along. Hide in the basement, don't talk to the American people, now get to the White House, uh, hide in another figurative basement, um, at his Oval Office. Wait, so is the Oval Office the most famous room in the world now a figurative basement? Once these people come up with a line they like, they never let go of it, no matter how dumb it is. They're more desperate to use the basement line than George Costanza was to use his jerk store line. And he's gonna start doing all his monologues with a giant bowl of shrimp. Also, at least Biden goes to the Oval Office. Trump spent less time there than a White House tour group. Catching Trump in the Oval Office was like catching a station agent at a subway stop. Excuse me, the machines are down and I need to buy a car. Sorry, shift's over. I'll be back next leap year. They've made such a big deal out of this press conference that yesterday Fox News White House correspondent Peter Ducey said he had tons of questions prepared. Do you have a good question? Ready? I have a binder full of questions. Is it a Lisa Frank Trapper Keeper? Mr. President, I have a two-part question. Will you sign my yearbook? And will you have a great summer? Thank you, and keep in touch. Fox has also been full of absurd and baseless speculation about what would happen at this press conference. At one point earlier this month, Fox host Stuart Varney predicted that all of Biden's answers would be pre-written on a teleprompter. What kind of press conference will it be? Will he have a teleprompter? Will he know the questions in advance? Will he call <laughs> on friendly reporters only? I do believe there'll be a teleprompter there, which you can just turn on when you need the set response. That would not surprise me at all. And I wouldn't be surprised, as you say, a staffer saying, you ask this question, you ask that question. I can see that coming a mile off. Maybe Fox News just can't believe that a president would be able to give a coherent answer to a question without a teleprompter. He must have had a script. He didn't suggest chugging bleach once. Also, at least Biden can read off a teleprompter without wincing like Rocky in the 15th round with Apollo Creed. Whenever Trump read off a teleprompter, he had the pain look of a high school sophomore being forced to watch a video on how babies are born. And Biden did start off his press conference by making an announcement that he would be doubling his original goal of 100 million shots in the first 100 days of his presidency. On December 8th, I indicated that I hope to get 100 million shots in people's arms in my first 100 days. We met that goal last week by day 58, 42 days ahead of schedule. Now today I'm setting a second goal, <clears throat> and that is we will, by my 100th day in office, have administered 200 million shots in people's arms. That's right, 200 million shots in 100 days. I know it's ambitious, twice our original goal, but no other country in the world has even come close, not even close to what we were doing. I believe we can do it. So he set a goal, met it, then set a second, more ambitious goal, which has credibility because he met his first goal. That's a novel. Strategy. It's certainly different from the Trump strategy of overpromising and under delivering. If Trump had won a second term, he'd promise 200 million shots by May 1st and 
end up giving out 200 million NFTs of shots by May 1st. Every American will receive a non-fungible token, which is a high resolution image of a vaccine shot. It will be available at low, low cost, $69 million. Or for an even $70 million, we'll throw in a gift of a sparkly cat playing with some yarn. That kind of announcement is Biden his best when he's got the vibe of an old timer football coach giving his young squad an inspirational halftime speech. We can do it, folks. We can score 42 points in the second half. And look, I know most of you have broken bones because I forgot to teach you how to tackle, but that's how we learn. That's when Biden's at his best. On the other hand, he gets a little off track when he trails off, like he did at the end of an answer on immigration. We're building back up the capacity that should have been maintained and built upon that Trump dismantled. It's going to take time. And the other thing we're doing, I might add, am I giving you too long an answer? Because if you don't want the detail. No, no, but I mean, I, I don't know how much detail you want about immigration. Maybe I'll stop there. Yeah, we all know the press famously hates the details. It's like a witness in a courtroom telling the judge, I mean, I know where the bodies are buried, but you guys probably all have dinner plans. And look, it's absolutely frustrating that the mainstream media has essentially laundered GOP talking points by making it sound like there's a political crisis or national security crisis on the border or that Biden created it out of thin air or ludicrously asking him if he moved too quickly in undoing Trump's cruel and inhumane and dysfunctional border policies. But on the other hand, there is a very real humanitarian situation on the border with unaccompanied minors who are fleeing poverty and violence and exercising their legal right to asylum. They deserve safety and aid and to be treated compassionately and humanely. And to his credit, Biden did say they should be treated humanely. We're capable of having all of those thoughts at the same time. And I know that's a change from the Trump era when our brains were so fried we were incapable of having even one thought at a time. For most of the Trump era, my brain was so overloaded, I forgot my kid's name. I just called him Guy and Dude or Lev and Igor. The moment Trump left office, I suddenly remember my ATM pin and my wedding anniversary, which is why her present was $200 in 20s. And there were some other weird moments too, like when Biden was asked about the tidal wave of GOP voter suppression laws Republicans have unleashed, the most ferocious nationwide assault on voting rights since Jim Crow, with more than 250 anti-voting bills across 43 states. Biden correctly pointed that out, but then went for an odd line that I'm not sure made sense. What I'm worried about is how un-American this whole initiative is. It's sick. It's sick. And so I'm convinced that we'll be able to stop this because it is the most pernicious thing. This makes Jim Crow look like Jim Eagle. Jim Eagle? Talking about the Muppet, Jim Eagle sounds like a desperate guess on Jeopardy for the question, he was the lead singer of the Eagles. <laughs> well, I know Jim Floyd was the lead singer of Pink Floyd. Also, you know there's a dude out there whose name is actually Jim Eagle watching this saying, what the <laughs> Now I gotta change my name. I'm just kidding. If there's a real man named Jim Eagle, he's not watching TV in the afternoon. Based on his name, he's probably building a concrete dam with his bare hands. Hey, Jim, the president just said your name. Jim Eagle doesn't have time for such foolishness. <laughs> but whatever you thought of Biden's press conference, it was certainly refreshing to see a president directly answer a reporter's questions without attacking anyone or melting down. And hey, Republicans, if you didn't like his answers, you're welcome to step away if you like. This has been A Closer Look. God's Love We Deliver cooks and brings over 2 million meals a year to men, women, and children living with HIV, AIDS, cancer, and other serious illnesses, and they need your help now more than ever. If you're watching this online, you can hit the donate button. Stay safe, wear a mask, get vaccinated. We love you.